today here at St. Martin's Lutheran Church. It is good to be with you wherever you are joining us from. Today is Palm Sunday, and we celebrate both the triumphant entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem, as well as the Sunday of the Passion, as we hear the story of Christ's crucifixion. It is a lot to deal with in just one service, and yet there is something beautifully authentic about the clash between victory and despair all at once. So we welcome you to the fullness of it. As we enter into Holy Week, we'd like to invite you to participate fully with us in any way you feel comfortable. On Maundy Thursday, we will be having drive through communion here at St. Martin's. All are welcome to pull up and partake in the Eucharist here in the parking lot on Thursday. On Good Friday, we will have an opportunity for people to come up and walk through the seven words from the cross, remembering the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then do join us on Sunday morning, Easter Sunday, as we gather in person or online to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. We give thanks for these opportunities to be in worship together, whether near or far, and you are welcome to all of it. As always in our worship today, we invite you to have bread and wine or crackers and juice with you, so that when we celebrate the Eucharist, we may do so together, despite the distance between us. Now, beloved, let us begin our worship with the processional gospel. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Make us living signs of the coming reign of Christ, and grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you, through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us join our hearts and voices in our gathering song, Hymn 344, 
all glory, loud, and honor. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the 31st chapter of the book of Psalms. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow, and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I've passed out of mind like one who is dead. 
I have become like a broken vessel, for I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 14th and 15th chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii, and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asked, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went into the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. 
He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. They did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt, and the cock crowed. And the servant girl on seeing him began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, 
Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be to you from God our Creator and our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Dear friends in Christ, I wonder if you noticed when we started this service that the palms I lifted didn't look as fresh as they usually do. These were last year's palms, which would ordinarily have been burned in preparation for Ash Wednesday. But the winter storm last month disrupted those plans. So the palms just continued to sit. And speaking of that freeze, I noticed that the palms in front of the church aren't looking especially hardy right now either. The sudden cold was too much for them and their fronds are brown and dead. It seemed to me as I was preparing this sermon that there may be something honest about that. Because like those dried out palms, some of us have been feeling cut off for a good year now. And like those weather battered palms outside, many of us have felt the trauma of sudden change and loss. On this day, when the church comes together to remember both the triumphant entry of Christ into Jerusalem, as well as his bloody passion and crucifixion, feels like there is something honest about dead and dried palms. Today we find the disciples struggling with the darkness and pain of their beloved teacher's impending death. Jesus tells his followers that one of them will betray him. Perhaps it's a long growing sense of disillusionment that causes Judas to make the choice he does. But whatever the motive, the news of this coming betrayal causes the disciples great pain. After the meal, they go to Gethsemane, and Jesus, who is now visibly distressed, goes off a ways to pray. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, but not what I want, but what you want. He returns to find Peter, James, and John asleep. Again, he went away and prayed, Mark tells us, saying the same words. And once more, he came and found them sleeping, <clears throat> for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. Peter, the disciple who had earlier declared, you are the Messiah, who had babbled about building tents for Moses and Elijah at the Transfiguration, who only moments earlier had vehemently sworn, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. This same Peter now finds himself at a loss for words. As Jesus prays in anguish, his disciples have no words for him. Not even a week before, the air had been thick with cries of Hosanna, welcoming Jesus as a conquering king. But in the shadow of the cross, the night is oppressively quiet, save for the soft snoring of eleven grief-stricken men and the distant clomp of soldiers' boots. Beloved, we all know what it is like to live in the shadow of the cross, to be reminded of our own brokenness and the brokenness of God's good creation. We have all experienced those dark nights of the soul when the only sound to break the crushing silence were our own anguished cries. Perhaps you know what it's like to feel your faith run dry because day after day it felt like your prayers went unanswered and nothing was really changing. Perhaps you know what it's like to feel cut off by the sudden unkind words or actions of someone you trusted. When we experience these things, often it is hard for us to find the words that seem appropriate. Our words may feel empty at best, disingenuous at worst. How do we speak hope when we find ourselves dried up? How do we speak love when we find ourselves face to face with someone who has cut us off. Today, these dried and dead palms seem authentic because we have been through much 
in this past year. It has been a year of being separated from each other and from this place. A year of intense loneliness and isolation. It has been a year of trauma and violence, watching again and again in the news as black and brown lives were taken, as neighbor turned on neighbor over differences of opinion and value, as a mob assaulted the nation's capital, killing, injuring, and traumatizing the police who sought to keep our leaders safe, and as gun violence has claimed innocent lives in Georgia and Colorado and so very many more places. Today, these dried and dead palms seem authentic because we know if we are only willing to admit it to ourselves, that these things have been happening for more than just a year. Loneliness and isolation were caused by our rejection of others and our refusal to see the image of God in them long before a pandemic sent us indoors. Trauma and death were caused by our apathy and complacency about racism, homophobia, and gun violence long before any politicians decided to talk about these things. Today, and not for the first time, our hosannas are drowned out by our silence, and we find ourselves in the garden, whether as betrayers, deniers, or deserters, the gospel calling Christ has put on our lives. But I trust in you, O Lord, writes the psalmist. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Dear church, even when our triumphs turn to tragedies, even when we languish in difficult days, even when we endure the sudden pain of change and loss, there is yet hope. It lies in that little word, but. But, I trust in you, O oh Lord. In spite of all the evidence that says we should despair, in spite of the hopelessness of our situation, we still trust. Because we know that Christ came to seek and to save the lost in just such a broken world as this. Because in Gethsemane, in his own dark night of despair, Jesus cried out, let this cup pass from me, but not what I want, but what you want. And the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, endured abandonment so that we might know that we are never alone. The Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, endured agony so that we might find peace the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, endured death so that we might live. And we trust in that promise. No matter how dark the night gets, no matter how crushing the silence, no matter how isolating the loneliness, we trust that promise. Because we know the story doesn't end on Good Friday. The story does not end at the cross. Beloved in Christ, Easter is coming, but not yet. It may still get darker before the stone is rolled away. There will be pain before there is peace. There will be tragedy before there is triumph. But thanks be to God, we are not alone. Christ is with us, making all things new. In his death, he makes us God's own. And in his life, we too shall live. And so now, 
Now is the time for us to keep awake and pray. To stand with those who are suffering when there are no words. To help carry the heavy burdens of our brothers and sisters who are stumbling in the shadows. Now is the time to lift our voices and speak hard truths against easy wrongs. Now is the time to work to repair what has been broken and mend what has been hurt. Now is the time to take up our cross and follow Jesus into the purpose for which he has claimed us and called us. We do this not because of our great strength, but because of God's great grace. Not because of our great passion, but because of God's great compassion. Not because we have changed, but because the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus has changed everything. As we go out this day, may we raise up our palms, even those that are dead and dried, because God can change the world even through our failings and faults if we are willing to offer them up. As we go out this day, may we raise up our hosannas, crying out to the one who is mighty to save, even as we recognize that we are not. As we go out this day, may we raise up our eyes to see the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And may we trust that this same Jesus goes with us, bringing new life and new hope. Amen. Now let us join our hearts and voices in our hymn of the day. Hymn 343, My Song is Love Unknown.
Inclusion of Lent, we have been using a humble creed for Lent by Pastor Andreas Wagner for our confession of faith. Let us confess our faith using these words at this time. I believe in God, creator of heaven and earth, who gave man and woman free will and entrusted this precious world to us. I believe in Jesus Christ, his son, our Lord, who was born in a manger by Mary, a woman of humble beginnings. Refusing to seek power and turning away from the sword, he died for us, the Lamb of God. He descended into the darkest of all places, but rose again on the third day, bringing life and hope to all. I believe in Christ's humble spirit, conceiving the holy, apostolic, and universal church, which is among us and beyond us, before us and after us. I believe in a church comprised of sinners and saints, imperfect and in need of grace, yet blessed, the body of Christ. I believe in the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation, awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world. In all nations, instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power but maintain justice, sustain soldiers, and guide those who command them that they serve those in greatest need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer, especially Michael, Anna Marie, Al, Pat, Jeff, Barbara, Jean, Mitzi, Jane, John, Don, Terry, Dave, Dawn, Molly, Millie, Don, Deborah, Sharon, Steve, Jim, Amy, Dean, Mike, Pat, Vito, Adriana, and all those we name before you now, aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Grant respite and renewal to all those in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You called followers to tend to Jesus' body in death. Sustain hospice workers and funeral directors. Bless this congregation's ministries at time of death, those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, all who offer support in grief. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism 
and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O oh God, your Amen. mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Once again, we remind you to have bread and wine or crackers and juice available with you. As we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you, for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All are welcome at the Lord's table. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Beloved, this is the body of Christ, given for you, and given for me. Beloved, this is the blood of Christ, shed for you, and shed for me. Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, you are what God made you to be. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. As we close our worship today, let us join our hearts and voices in our ascending song, hymn 347, Go to Dark Gethsemane.
The peace of Christ be with you all. As you go out this week, may you share that peace with everyone you meet in every way you can. Go in peace, beloved. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.